Hello, nerds. This interview is with Charlie LaGreca. For those of you that don't know who Charlie LaGreca is, he is he and his wife are the force behind Dink Denver. They're the ones that put it on every year. Uh, I tried to get his wife to join the conversation too, but she got into a business conversation that she didn't want to slash couldn't uh, really get out of. So just sat down with Charlie. Uh, you can check the card and to see the last time I talked with Charlie over at Eclectica Cafe. This episode has been brought to you by the generallynerdy.net shirt. Looks a little something like this over on the Redbubble store. Redbubble.com slash... Uh, the, the, the link's right here. I can't think of what it is right now off the top of my head. Uh, I should have wrote it down. Whatever. This is the Charlie LaGreca interview from Dink Denver 2018. Hello, nerds. Hello, nerds. We are sitting at Dink Denver 2018 with the man himself, Charlie. Oh, man. Let's let's talk into the mic, shall we? Yeah, let's talk in the mic. <laughs> with the man, Charlie LaGreca. Uh, unfortunately, Amy couldn't join us for this. No. I, wanted to, I wanted to talk to both of you about it, but uh, you're just as good as, as... Oh, thanks. She's <laughs> hanging with Ghost Freehood right now, so... Um, so... So when was the last time we talked the last on, time, on an interview? The last time we did an interview was dink the one? first Dink. Because I couldn't make it last year, uh, because I had to work. It was it was All either right. do, it was right, either do that. Dink, yeah. it was either do Dink or, or do Starfest. Oh, that's right. And Starfest, I there were some you guests, gotta do there Starfest. Were some guest interviews. Are you gonna I do really, Starfest? This I am next gonna week? be okay. at You're Starfest doubling next down. week as well. Yeah. yeah, I yo, I am doing. So I have I have a series, uh, How to Comic Con. Right. Oh, right. So yeah, kind of yeah, giving, yeah. yeah. giving people like etiquette pointers and, and and the experience of what it's like to go to Comic Con. Right. right. Uh, and then I also do an adventures in photography that I do at cons as well because I'm I'm exploring my ability as an artist through right. photography and yeah. as I grow I'm documenting it. Effectively. Right, right. So between those two series at just this two day event I've been I've been just bogged down with work. So getting these interviews has oh been God. like a break. <laughs> So yeah, last time we talked was Dink One, right? And it was a brand new thing. You had brand so much thing. more hair. <laughs> I did. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, uh, I, I didn't recognize you at first when I saw you yesterday really? because I was like, wow, oh wow, that's because I had like the hair down because, here. Yeah, yeah, your hair was down here. My locks so, are gone. What have you learned from year one wow. to year three? Well, um, well, how do how do, how we'll talk. I, I'll definitely tell you, but I can't wait to hear what you think of the differences of the show. Um, you know, that first year, it was um, amazing being in that space. Um, we did a fantastic job. But I think what I've learned is just to, to do a slow burn, to grow it each year. You can't do everything you want, you know? Right. You have to kind of grow it and grow it and grow it and grow it and be patient with it. And, um, and what's really important is your team. Really learning how to, to pull people around you that um, are a family or looking out for each other. You right. know, that you're all... That you're all into this together, you're all on the same page, and really trying to look out for each other. And how do you maintain that? Because it gets really stressful. It gets highly stressful. People want to kill each other at times. Yeah. You hate each other at times. And how do you manage that? That's the. That's a learning thing all the time with all the time. with doing shows. And um, and also, how do we keep our identity of this show? So, for instance, um, you know, we really want to keep it independent in the sense that non-corporate sponsorships. Right. Um, Sponsorships that are independent rooted or rooted in a mission that's really valuable or something like that. Um, and we've had to turn down some sponsorships, which I've talked about before, but or, or pass on them. And, and that's really difficult because, dude, that's a lot of we're money not getting you paid. We're not making too. money, people. <laughs> we're just doing a show for you yeah. because we love it. And eventually I would love to pay everyone. I would love that and that be a possibility. But So I've been learning a lot about that and being patient and asking people to believe in it and believe in the process. And... Um, and just learning about the creative aspect and learning about the organizational aspect more. It doesn't matter how many shows you've done. Right. If you think you know how to do a show, I don't care how many years you've done it. If you think you know it, then you don't know it. You really don't. And you really don't know what you're talking about. Right, you don't know what you're talking about. Because that means you're not challenging yourself. Right. You're not looking at yourself. You're not exploring and you're not being like, all right, how can I do this better? How can I grow? 
And, um, and more importantly, listen. Listen right. to the people around you. Listen to the exhibitors. Listen to you guys. Listen to media. Listen to our staff. Listen to the venue people. And, um, and also learn how to stand your ground at times, right. which is for hard sure. for me. I, I remember that first year. I thought it was a brilliant idea because... It's it is focusing like like you hear at Denver Comic Con or I've, right, so, I've right. heard it at Salt sure. Lake Comic Con and I've heard other uh, guests at other cons talk about hearing it at other cons where it's like nobody goes there for the art nobody's going yeah, to right, Comic Con right. for comic books they're mm -hmm. going there for the pop culture experience. pop culture the candy the eye candy yeah. the which is nothing wrong with that but I think it's but, I think it's gotten away from yes it's gotten as far as I'm I love them don't get me wrong I love San Diego I love New York Comic Con. I love Heroes Con, um, and um, but up. Oh, hold on, right. Stand by, please. Um, stand. Up. I just did that. That didn't even really happen, to people. I'm just trying to make this look like it's official. Uh, no, I I think um, those are great. You know, those are the big box um, cons. I was I was joking around with someone today that like those are like the Legion of Superheroes, and we're like the substitute Legion. We're like the <laughs> I'm like mad reader. We're the, we're the lad. defenders, and right, they're the right, Avengers. Right, we're the defenders, and they're the Avengers. Exactly. We're the low key, like bad team. We're the West <laughs> Coast Avengers, you know. But um, no, we're focusing. We're, this allows us to just focus on the art, and what we're saying now is where art and comics converge. You know, where yeah. tattoos tell a story, graffiti tells a story. Comics will be the linchpin. I will never. We will. Ne we will protect that. That will be protected, and it will. It will never be moved to another floor right. it will never be moved to this show will die before it gets moved to or sequestered to some other area right. I won't stand for that and um, I want this to stay rooted doesn't mean people can't come and enjoy other aspects or enjoy uh, even dressing up in cosplay or something like that but this show is about the artists and even right. our even our celebrities if we book celebrities right. they're going to be creators right. they're going to create they're going to draw they're going to paint they're going to write they're going to do something that facilitates a peer, a peer to peer atmosphere, so that when they're coming, um, it's a peer to peer level. It's not just so much of, um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's not so much uh, glorification. Right, it's more right, of right. you're here because we want to hear about your process, and we want others to share their process with you. you I, I re yeah, no, I that's that was one of the things I really appreciated. I sat in on both of Joe Kelly's panels. Oh yeah, and that I really really appreciated that that was how the questions were going. Even it, right. the people here. That's why they're here, is because they want to know those things. Right, right. So that's it's. And it, I kill giants. It's an independent movie. Right. right. It's yeah. a. It's we didn't do Deadpool. Right. right? Like we could have done Deadpool and done a Q and A with Deadpool, but and that would be awesome. Like, that come would on. Would be great. Yeah, absolutely. But we want to focus on his, and it turns out I Kill Giants is his most personal piece of work, and it's a beautiful piece. Did of you get to see the movie? I did. Yeah. Did you cry? Uh, I got very, very close. Amy it was and very I, we emotional. had the bunny ears on yeah. it. Yeah. Everyone, everyone was bawling. Um. um so, speaking of your guests, yeah. you had probably your biggest guest this year in Lake Wazamo? Yeah, and Jeff Lemire, and, 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 uh, and James Obar, Obar and Mafood. Uh, Mafood. <laughs> uh, did, would you say that you saw... And Joe Kelly, and Jeez, we forgot right, Jen and Joe, Steven Siegel. Right. God, <laughs> we had a lot of big guests. Good dudes, you did. Yeah. Uh, did you did you notice an increase that you could necessarily attribute to those guests? Yeah, absolutely. We noticed. Did you feel well? Yeah, you first since first year and second, a third yeah. year, you noticed it. Oh yeah, there was definitely there's definitely grown in size. What do you think of the whole change? I of the like show? Does the it, does three it feel levels. I really like the three levels. Yeah, I feel like my my one problem, you know, constructive Tell piece me, of let me criti hear criticism would be like have the get rid of Charlie. No, <laughs> it's happened. I've heard of those things before. Have have the two the two upper levels uh -huh. have some sort of differentiation because they're both effectively the same thing, just different artists and different right, vendors, right, right, right? right? So so like how do you differentiate? Do that? do like do like see? No, I did that last year. You did. And you see, know and what? I wasn't here last we year. We got so. complaints. Fair enough. Because people wanted him to be integrated. So it's weird, right? So, like so last year we were like, okay, here's the painters. Here's the painter's pavilion. Yeah, you did that. You and did here's that the, tattoo the first area. year as well. You had yeah. a tattoo area, and, and that then, seemed to make sense to and me. And we got actual complaints that can we mix everyone in? Fair so, enough. But Tattoo Alley still wanted to be Tattoo Alley. So it's weird, right? Like, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't but know it's either way, like, that's such a minor issue. But I agree with you in a way. Like, it's kind of a, you know, oh, oh I got to do this again, people. Go for it. Stand by for Charlie. Give me about five more minutes. Um, so... 
Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Um, it's just trying to cultivate a good show and, yeah. and give people a good experience. And But what we did do this year, so you didn't get to experience this last year, was we put a bar area. And you, mm-hmm. If you were listening, I don't know if you can hear, but we have a, fr- a group called Toi et Moi, plays French, amazing kind of gypsy jazz, beautiful uh, is that music. that's who I was playing yeah. just now? And so we're kind of doing cool things on the floor that are a little different. Yeah, you know, for sure. And trying to make interesting aspects of that. I had a DJ yesterday playing, like, kind of more chill. They were doing that at, at Denver yeah. Comic Con, and I think they stopped when you left. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> well, I mean, I get why, probably, but... Yeah, because it's a, a, a nightmare trying to hurry. It's a nightmare, and, but here, so far, and we'll probably get complaints, but then we have the people who love it, yeah. you know? So... But I just wanna, I wanna, I wanna set a different experience. I don't want every show to be the same, and and I think people are responding to it. I think it feels like I, we're I growing. I feel like yeah. yeah. I feel like the the DJ the first year as the one that I really remember. There was a DJ on the floor, wasn't there? Or was somebody just bl- playing loud? No, music. I think they were just playing. Someone was playing loud music. So. It, but some it homeless guy atmosphere. came in. <laughs> it added to the atmosphere. Right. And this, I feel like, is even more of that add to the atmosphere. Yeah, listen to that. Isn't that cool? So, it's aside cool. from Dink, what takes up the rest of your year? I know this is a very large portion of it, but um, what else do you do? So, I'm doing a comic book with the... Um, do you know I do? Draw yeah, I, yeah, that's how you started in the So, business. I'm doing a, a comic with the New York Museum of Science, which is oh, the nice. very first... Uh, Science Museum in North America. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. If anyone is in New York or is goes to New York, it's incredible. And I'm fortunate enough that they picked me to be an artist on the comic for them. And we're doing this cool kids detective, like science detective uh, uh, comic. I don't know if it's an exhibit or experience or and comic. And, and it's amazing that I'm being part of that. So I'm getting to design the characters. They have a writer who, um, Karen, uh, I'm spacing on her name. But um, working with her and... Uh, Usually I work on my own. I usually write my own stuff, but it's it's been wonderful working with her and working with a writer and getting to work with a letterer, Mario Gonzalez, and Kaiju, who's our coloring team. And so that's wrapping up right now. Maybe there'll be an issue too, I don't know. <laughs> um, and uh, I worked for CUNY out of New York. We did an environmental activism comic for two issues, and those did really well. Um, and those are educational things, mm-hmm. you know? Um, kind of activism based stuff and learning stuff um, which is fine I mean I'm, I'm excited about that I mean I would love to get to draw my own comics as well I mean I'm drawing my own comics but you know like get them published and out uh, in do my own in right. what's in my head right. and uh, I don't know I'm just all over the place so that's kind of what I'm working on um, and uh, yeah that's so it. The surviving last, yeah right the last bit uh, you guys pulled off something that your indirect comp- competitors over at DCC uh-huh. couldn't do. What's that? News you coverage. Did? Yes, news coverage. Really? A, yeah, everybody, all every Comic-Con, every, all 150 oh, wait, Comic-Cons, yeah, thing? all 150 Comic-Cons across the nation get local coverage. Right. That's easy. Yeah. Uh, what you got makes, national coverage. You got, you got basically international, but I yeah. think it's only um, Americans that go to the website. CBR is a pretty big... Oh, I love big, CBR, yeah. They covered you guys. They, they did a spot on you about three weeks ago. Probably a little over three weeks ago. Um, comparing you to Cake. Really? Yeah. I gotta see this. Yeah. What'd they say? Uh, they, they were they, they were just talking about how it's it focuses on comic book art and that you know just kind of the the real speaking points that, that we've gone over effectively, mm-hmm. um, and and that it was a good place to go if you appreciate the art over the spectacle. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. So they said good things about it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I wasn't really sure if they were putting us and Cake against each other. We would fight. <laughs> I know no, Neil they, over at Cake. We'll get into it, man. <laughs> they did. They 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 compared you to Cake in a very very good way. That's so, cool. I, you obviously didn't know, so I'm, I'm sure. Uh, do you do you maybe attribute some of the popularity this year? I mean, this uh, the, the from growth CBR? from from your co- your national coverage as well. Uh, because that's probably. what makes that's I what think... makes a convention. Uh, meaningful in I the think, overall um, conversation. I think local and, I mean, national, I guess. You know, like, uh, I'm thinking about Westward. It right. has been so amazing to us. Um, and that just has happened naturally. It's not been like a... It's not like... sending PR over there. Right. I mean, we are, but, I mean, it's just, I think... You know, I grew up reading that magazine. Mm-hmm. And that magazine meant a lot to me because that's where I discovered Matt Groening's Life in Hell. I discovered... Um, what was his name? Kenny B was doing these crazy comics that I just was drawn nothing like what I'd seen comic books and they had all these comic artists in there and cool shit and just alternative punk rock stuff and indie stuff and so I think 
like that has been really good for us that that publication because I think they get it they understand mm-hmm. what we're doing it, it like is you know it's, it's similar to that magazine um, but then it's really cool to hear CBR and places that I have, like comic book outlets yeah you know comicbook.com right I, know? I really wouldn't be like, surprised because CBR picked you up this year to see it in comicbook.com or maybe uh, newsarama or one of those right right wow that'd be amazing and I hope that those guys know like you know I'm out to I don't want us to put certain comic genres in the corner right and I don't like when arty comics or artsy comics or indie comics put superheroes in a corner and I don't like when I guess I'm re- referencing uh, Flashdance or uh, <laughs> a, a lot whatever um, but but we're uh, you know once someone gets pushed in the corner right we're all doing comics right we all freaking love comics so let's embrace comics and I would love if our show could be a percentage of all of those things, along with other cool, relevant art that's happening now, you know? Um, so, and, um, yeah, keep just exploring that aspect. And, and it means a lot when those national coverage, because you don't expect that. Right. You don't expect them to notice a little dinky show, <laughs> you know? Um, so, yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. Right on, man. Thank you for that, CBR. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie, Dude. for sitting with me one more time. You can make... What are these things called that you use on... Uh, 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 Snuggies? Snuggies. You can make them into gloves. <laughs> Fashionable gloves, people. <laughs> Oscar Blues Pilsner. Awesome. Thank you, man. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it, man. Uh, 2019 next. 2019 next. What's what's in the future? Cultivating who we want as guests. I have a lot of no, people up here. No real set plans yet, just but ideas of where you're going. Anyone, you know, I always put it out there. I always tell people if there's someone you want, tell me. Because you're gonna have with each everyone's input, we can build a better show. So mm-hmm. if you have someone you want, tell me. You wouldn't believe how many people have told me their ideas and I go, oh my god, and then we get that person for them. Um, because it's a I didn't think of it. Right. So so whatever that's what it is. So I'm holding like a council meeting with <laughs> Other like-minded geeks, like who should we get next? Like right. who would be fun? Who do you guys want to see here? Who would get you excited? So um, yeah, right Thank on, you, man. man. I Thank you. Double check hey, and you got that sure. interview with John Leguizamo. Hopefully, I did. you guys watch that. Yeah, uh, that will. Yeah, that will probably be up before this one. So, yeah. And I have to say, Leguizamo was amazing. He's a real deal. He's meeting, such meeting a, a nice celebrity guy. Such that a actually nice is guy. so down to earth and and really. Uh, well, giving, and, very and, giving, and he he because he has his stage shows, Freak and Sexaholics, mm-hmm. yeah, all that, stuff. and and everything that he, Ghetto Clown and all that. Like he he presents himself yeah. as one way, yeah. and then you meet him, and he is that Spickle way. Rama. It's so he's cool. like so cool. he's cool. Yeah, he's, he's a nice super dude. smart. Man. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he he told me. Uh, I asked him what the nerdiest thing that maybe people didn't know about him. He said he loves Ulysses. That yeah, novel. I know. I was like. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So today I was talking about him. I don't know if you need to, you don't need to keep this in here, but I was talking to him and I told him about this one comic with these different styles and he's like, oh my God, it's like Ulysses where he's writing in a different character's voice and has a different writer <laughs> style. And you're like, whoa, name drop. And that I was, was like, whoa. That's a heavy one yeah, right there. Yeah, right? that was kind Seriously. of my reaction to it too. Yeah. So awesome. Well, thanks for coming.